Welcome to the August 11th, 2023 meeting of the Hadley Housing Authority. And we are recording this for a later um, projection on YouTube. So you can't see all of us right now because we don't have Hadley Media to record the meeting today. So with apologies, we'll do the best we can today. And uh, with me today, I'm David Moskin. I'm the ch current chair of the Hadley Housing Authority. Off screen right now, or to my left, you know, my commissioner uh, commissioner, and to my immediate left, right, your right is Reese Mike Free. Reese Smith Free. Reese Smith Free, thank you. And, uh, on my right, your left, is Stu Oppenheimer, Commissioner, and Harry Chadwick, Commissioner. Today was a specially called meeting, me, my fault for doing this, because we're in the process of deciding whether to renew the management contract with Amherst Housing Authority. As of October 1st, our contract will be expired um, and we need to decide what we're doing about that. So today is a discussion. I don't think we'll vote today, but we might. And I anticipate that there will be a regularly scheduled commissioners meeting at the last Tuesday of this month of August for any final uh, business that we need to cover that we don't oh. cover today. Um, so today we are not listening to, we are not inviting the public to speak um, so we can have our discussion as calmly as possible and uh, not be distracted by individual concerns. All right, so this is an open meeting. Um, earlier, I thought we might need to be an executive um, session to discuss it because it is a contract negotiation, but apparently this kind of contract negotiation does not in fit into the categories that are allowed for executive session. So it was my mistake to have originally posted the meeting for executive session. All right, so the one subject today is a discussion on redoing the contract with the Amherst Housing Authority. Reese. Reese. I have a perceived conflict of interest to disclose. Um, so let me, let, me, let me interrupt you, forgive me. Pamela, who do disclosure, disclosures of public interest go to? Is it a public thing that we do here locally or is it go to GACD or the UNDPD? So it, it's publicly made by the board or employee um, if, if it's needed, depending on the conflict is, and then it always goes to the Secretary of State, State Ethics Board. Yeah, yeah. So um, I prepared a statement, which is what is, is called for. So I have to openly disclose in this public meeting prior to uh, any discussion or deliberation on uh, the management agreement with Amherst Housing Authority. So I have a perceived conflict of interest to disclose. But first, some review of State Ethics Commission's standards of conduct specific to my disclosure of, um, so that the public understands the disclosure I believe I must make. Both elected and appointed commissioners on local housing authority boards are, quote, public officials and must complete state ethics and conflict of interest training every two years. The Ethics Commission maintains a helpline for public officials to determine if and when disclosure be made regarding a perceived conflict of interest under the ethics law, GLC 268A. When personal interests and relationships overlap with official responsibilities, violations are a $2,000 fine for each occurrence. Now you can see why I want to make the public disclosure. 
My concern about the appearance of a conflict of interest relates to the rule about use of or attempted use of an official position uh, or, quote, inerrantly coercive authority, end quote, to secure unwarranted privileges for themselves or others, or to retaliate against others. Public employees yeah. must avoid creating the appearance of a conflict of interest that any person influences them, enjoys their, or quote, enjoys their official favor, or that they will act or fail to act because of a relationship. The conflict of interest law is why commissioners must not use their position, for instance, mm -hmm. to attempt to require an executive director to reduce or eliminate a tenant's overdue account balance, which, by the way, could also be considered, quote, misuse of confidential information under the standards of conduct. It is also why commissioners must not meet privately with te a tenant, for instance, to discuss strategy intended to undermine an executive director or managing agent. A commissioner holding a meeting with a tenant is outside the scope of a commissioner's role and duties and could easily be perceived as a conflict of interest by other tenants who were excluded from the meeting. The authority of a commissioner begins with the call to order and ends with adjournment of the meeting. I have what I believe any member of the public could perceive as a conflict of interest. My choices as outlined by the Ethics Commission are as follows. One, I can choose to abstain from participating in the deliberation and vote on this matter before the board, or number two, I can disclose in open meeting and follow up with a written disclosure to the appointing public body. For instance, an elected public official would follow up with a written disclosure to the town clerk. However, I'm an appointed commissioner, so I have to follow up with the select board, a written disclosure. So here's my disclosure. A family member has applied for public housing. This family member has applied for public housing at many different housing authorities, but one of them is in Hadley. A reasonable person could easily perceive that I might use my official position as a board of commissioner to influence a decision by Hadley Housing Authority, or in our case, managing agent Amherst Housing Authority, about whether or not my family member got an apartment. So to answer any concerns or perceptions of conflict of interest by tenants or any members of the public, other board members, staff, and to relieve such a concern, it is my understanding that when a family member applies to a housing authority wherein another family member is a commissioner, that application is not handled by the local housing authority. The determination is not handled by the local housing authority. It goes straight to the executive office of housing and livable, livable communities who makes the determination. So I wanted to, so, so the local housing authority staff, executive director, whoever cannot decide for or against well, whether a family member of a commissioner gets in or is excluded from getting in. The Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities will make that determination. So I wanted to forestall any concern that my family member had any special in. In fact, personally, it's going to delay any apartment because the Executive Office is gonna be involved.
So. That's your disorder? Yes, because it relates to the management agreement because it is my understanding that there is some discussion among tenants that because my family member has applied here, it could influence my vote. Do you see what I'm saying? I do, but you just explained that your family member who is applying for housing will not be processed through Hadley, Amherst, or Belgium. Exactly. Right? And see, so, I know so, that now because okay. I have looked into it, but, but tenants and members of the public didn't know that. Okay. Did you even know that? No. Nope. Until I told you. So Good. it's the perception that's the conflict of interest. Okay. The perception of a conflict of interest is the problem. Okay. Uh, Pamela, before I come in, I don't see any problem with what Risa is talking about here because you and your staff and Amber staff will not be had for both of them, so will not be had like this application. We have to ask them when I said it's true. Is what she said true? So, so it is. So we will, we, we will be getting all the information on the application and that once it's a completed application, I send that to the executive office. They will vet the application to make sure the person is eligible and qualified for housing. And then they'll also make sure that the person found the appropriate spot on the champ list and was is eligible for an apartment at this time. And then they'll give the go ahead to, to house the person. And then the person could potentially, if they're on the Hadley list, come here and be a resident, and that most certainly would cause what people would perceive to be. Right. Um, so, but this this does, I guess, stop that ahead. Mm -hmm. I, I would not feel comfortable with DHCD making the decision, if the final decision, if you were not eligible to make the decision here because of the fact they have not been responsive to tenants over the years. No matter if we THCD over the 20 years I've lived here and many tenants know if we text them, email them or telephone call, the only time that we get a response from them is when we talk with, and when we're telling them that something is very grave. Well, that's the legal process. So, so no, the, but I'm just saying I don't I, I wouldn't you. agree with that process because I do think it would be biased. Thank you. Okay. So typically when there's been a disclosure in my past life on public boards. The board has to acknowledge the disclosure and either say it's okay with them for the person who's making the disclosure to participate in the subject or not. Uh, so, David, we, yeah, that's not the case with this because I made an open public disclosure yeah. of my own volition. I ha either have the choice to make the disclosure and participate, irrespective of what any other board member yeah. thinks. Or abstain from participating. And you're choosing to abstain from participating? No, I'm choosing to uh, engage in deliberation and vote on this issue because I have made an open and complete factual public disclosure and, quote, as soon as possible, follow up with a written disclosure to okay. the select board. All right, I don't know the laws about that in housing. But uh, uh, it's the law. It's so there's actually no problem here. Lisa sure. can particip participate. She's made her disclosure. Yes. And if anybody has a question, there's a record of the disclosure. Yeah. Right. Harry. Okay. Harry. Yeah. Question. I'm just a family member. I understand the disclosure and the contents. This family member, where do they fall in the list or in the queue? It's that cannot be disclosed. That is confidential information. And I understand how that any tenant applicant, we are trained in that in our board training. If you're going to know that now in your neighborhood, is if this person applies, could be put ahead of everybody else that's in the queue because I understand that they're trying to find housing for thousands of people and they're on this, what you call the champ list or something. So this particular individual met family member under the disclosure, where they would fall in, they, they can't come in and they get pushed right up to the top to come into heaven. Exactly, and that's the reason why it's that's, that's that's the box. Yeah. Now, anybody on the list is disclosed by a date and time stamp, and the only way they can go above somebody with a date and time stamp is if they're up, if, if they can fall into one of 
the four emergency categories that are set out by regulation. So, and even that is then date. So she has given you the number and if you tell me it's not for shot, you may be able to do your other shot and you can come back and see where you want to get that chunky ahead of you. Exactly, that's correct. Okay. 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 Over and over, we've seen people jump to the head of the list, so we can pretend that the, that we follow the champs list religiously, but it just doesn't happen. I I've known it because I live here and I've spoken with people. So okay. it's telling people that that they so, follow. I'm, I'm going to say that. Right. So so that's what your perceptions may have been prior. It's not it's not it's not, it's not knowledge because, I, to my knowledge, you've never seen a champ list. So yeah, that's no, not since champ. No, it's part of the audit process. The champ champ was stopping that, and that's one of the reasons why it was implemented. By D Deval Patrick came up with that because local boards and or housing authorities, the staff themselves, were not following the weight system. But with champ, there's no cheating. So that there's absolutely no cheating. You were absolutely accurate, but now it's not possible. I disagree with that. <laughs> Guys, I really hope that we can stick to the uh, contract discussion today, vote or no vote, and we can discuss CHAMP and DHB. And I just want to find a question in the panel. Do you have to be a Massachusetts resident? They can come from any other state. Okay, thank you. Personally, I wish you could just take care of our folks first, but they come from every state. You don't have to be a resident of other states. Residents from Calgary uh, do get a priority among other folks, but they have to get through the. There's always the priority of an emergency person first, and that emergency person can be here in Hadley, and they and that would give them another emergency, or they could be trying to come up from Florida. We do seem to get a lot of folks from Florida. Yeah. Well, you get to a certain age down in Florida and you find out your family's still up here and you need help. So, okay. Thank you. Interesting. It's lots to learn. Um, I'm going to give a little background briefly on where I think things stand with the uh, contract renewal. I've talked to the chair of the Amherst Housing Authority very recently, and he's pretty confident that his board of commissioners would like to see at least a three-year contract from Hadley. He said when they first signed up the agreement with Hadley, it was a one-year, and by the time they were done with all the paperwork and discussion with DHCD, the year had passed. So it took a year to set up the initial contract. So I think they're a little gun-shy of shorter-term contracts. So that's the bad news for anybody that wanted a shorter uh, duration of the contract. The good news is he confirmed that 60 days, either side can excuse themselves from the contract. You have to give warning ahead of time, but then it's 60 days notice and Amherst can say goodbye to Hadley and Hadley can say goodbye to Amherst. So I think in both his mind and mine, the length of the contract is not important to those who might think Hadley can do a different job or a better job um, uh, administering our own housing authority by ourselves. All right, so that's the background. So Amherst would like to renew with Hadley being our management agent, but they don't want to do it for less than three years. And they sent the reminder that either side can get out of the 60 days notice. So I will open motions or discussion. Whoever would like to say something, I'm going to ask people to keep their comments to the subject, to the point, as brief as possible. Risa? Given everything I said about conflict of interest law, does anyone else have a conflict of interest they would like to disclose before we begin deliberation? I eat a lot of Chinese food in Amherst, so part of my uh, dollar goes to their um, sales tax revenue. So I suppose I have a financial interest in the don't <laughs> only being half serious here. Do you have conflict of interest to disclose? No, I I've disclosed I mine. David, do you have a conflict of interest? Not that I can think of right now. Thank you. Do you have a conflict of interest? Yes, I do. 
But I don't know if I want to bring it up now or when we what we're actually those yeah, we'll have to do it before the place. Okay. I'd like to make a motion asking Chairman David Moskin to recuse himself on oh, today's vote. Oh, I just asked you. I just I, or you just said I have a No, not on myself. I, want me to disclose. I know. I'm just I'm just saying that I'm making a motion when we take a vote that you recuse yourself from today's vote regarding renewing the management contract between Hadley Housing and Amherst Housing. And I'd like and I'd like to have a second on that. Is, is that an order to do it? I, I brought so a motion. I, well, I just asked her about it, and she said I had to do that. Right. Is the motion category? They're in the middle of another motion. You'd have to go through that motion. So to to it the motion is no another. There's no other motion on the table. My question, the chair allowed me to speak. My question is, does any other commissioner have even the perception of a conflict yes, with another commissioner? Yes. No, that's not no. Well, that's what I no, no, you have to establish. You have to establish. No, it's yes. like yes. you want to <laughs> Ms. Commissioner, <laughs> according to the rules and regulations of the Code of Conduct for the Ethics Commission, they encourage self-disclosure. If you have an accusation to bring about any other commissioner or public official, you have to make the complaint to the Ethics Commission, not in a public forum, unless slander is something you want to defend. You just asked court. if we had any conflict of interest or conflict of interest. You have, that's not how you, I interpreted it, to say, okay, do you want to self-disclose a conflict of interest or a perception of a conflict of interest. But yes, I'm like, now when the vote takes place, you say now, is there any action you've taken as a public official or inaction that any reasonable person could see as a conflict of interest? That's your behavior. First, then you could talk about afterwards after we. But I said about me or somebody else, and she said, "Go on." So I just listened to what she said. Anyway, so. How about yourself? Are you comfortable? You don't. You have no disclosures. No disclosures. How many of the disclosures? I can't see the number. No. Okay, they're not a tenant here. They're not okay. compensated as a board member. Okay, then I will ask the question. Um, would anybody like another commissioner to recuse themselves and why? You can't do that. Well, I can't do that. No. Yes, you can. If it's not wrong. I can ask. No, it's not wrong. I can bring, uh, we have to start the vote first, the motion to do this, in other words. Well, you're controlling the whole thing. Why don't you just take over the meeting? We have a chair. So well, I'm happy to look at that panel when I ask the question. Is there anything wrong with having a motion to ask if anybody would like another commissioner to recuse themselves? Mm -hmm. I've never seen or heard that either, but I'm happy to have them. Yeah. Yeah. That's not cool, but it's already happened. That's already happened. Um, but, oh, to recuse themselves now or for the state? Or, uh, so it's going to ask me to recuse myself. I don't know why. Um, I think that I don't know if you want to let her speak, but again, I, I think she should be very careful of what she's saying because, again, it could be perceived as so slander. Why? By her, by, by allowing her to take over and, and asking people, where did I don't understand where she gets the right to ask anybody if they have conflict of interest? It's not in the agenda, and the fact that you did that and then. You threw everybody off balance because you were asking me if I had any conflict of interest. But you, I thought you were talking about anything to do with the board in general, not myself. So it's how you stated it. So if I want to be able to restate this, number one, it has to be done when we decide to take a vote to renew the contract or not renew the contract. 
right, but well, by you being allowed to do that, I've never seen that where somebody goes around and asks each individual okay, maybe, member. Maybe we should have had that as an agenda. Item. But it's not, if you got away with it, and, that, and that's... It's, well, look, it's all under discussion. We're all human beings here. We're all trying no, to... No, it was done in a dictatorial manner. It wasn't done in this discussion. So why would you like me to accuse myself? I would, that I, I would tell you now. When we take the vote to um, renew a contract or not, then I would tell you. Not right now. Because Maybe if you don't renew the contract today or any time, this doesn't apply. Your recusal would not apply. Only if we were going to take a vote. Is the world taking a vote or not? Because I understood this. We're having a discussion. Right. Here, it's a discussion of discussion of management. So we haven't come to any vote, any express. Right. At this point, we're discussing Okay, right. so would you like me to continue some yeah. discussion? Sure. I'm not in favor of, of, of a one-year contract. <clears throat> Back at our July meeting, I tried to get uh, an opportunity for us to advertise for an executive director from somebody I don't recall who said, you can't do that while we're under a management agreement. So at least from my standpoint, I have an interest in having had me take back its own responsibilities, its own affairs, its own complex, and staff and, and all of that. And uh, I think a one-year contract, if we cannot advertise for an executive director, even on the 60-day clause, the notice of grammars, we're, we're handcuffing ourselves. Uh, if anything, I would like to see, and since it's been stated before, that family and administration would help with the uh, transition period, if that's the way to go. Um, that the 60 days doesn't matter, but if if we can't advertise for an executive director to search out our own opportunity to take back responsibility for our complex and our tenants and our residents, uh, I'd be more in favor of an extension of the current contract for 90 days. And in that particular case, we can uh, let this contract uh, continue. But I want the uh, assurance that we can advertise for staff and executive director. And Amherst would be helping with the transition if we were able to do that right away. We'd be within that 90 days of extension of this contract. I'm not in favor of a new contract for one year or three years or anything. Okay. I don't understand with the thinking that we So, how would you be gaining more control over an executive director or your own affairs of the property when I'm running the the property with the Hadley Board of Commissioners and by the Hadley bylaws and, and rules. I'm actually asking him. I think there have been a number of, of uh, instances where the administration of the Amherst Housing Authority, um, I, I sometimes don't see the sensitivity and, and the uh, and the uh, concern for our residents and our tenants here. Um, now, I've been told everybody's happy with Amherst's administration and running the complex. I don't know if that's true either. I think a lot of people here just complying with one, I think they're afraid sometimes to speak up because we do have people that are vocal and speak up and they tend to be a, a target or uh, some form of, of treatment or whatever. Um, so I don't know what I hear all the time. Everybody here in the complex is happy with Amherst and the administration. And all. I, I don't see that. I'm not sure that's really that's accurate. Someone that has a, a responsibility getting back control of your own complex. Mm -hmm. So it's it 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 right, but it, but I'm just going to advise you that any executive director and the executive office of housing and livable. Communities is going to also hold you, the Hadley Board of Commissioners, accountable for how your development is run. If the development starts playing favoritism for our tenants, doesn't comply with the laws of the Commonwealth, you're going to get in trouble. So you should. I see this board. There's been a lot of interference. In this. this is a functional. There has been way too much interference on this board. Yes, and that's why Amherst has been sitting back saying we're not sure about it. Board does not operate properly in half. Right. 
We know that our bylaws haven't been updated since the 60s. So when people talk about policies that were written incorrectly and bylaws that haven't been updated, I mean, it's hard for me to sit here being a tenant and a board member knowing that I have so much knowledge about all this stuff that you quote, which isn't being done or has never been done correctly. Would it report to now that the knowledge that you're passing on is not always accurate? You don't have the knowledge of running a housing authority. You don't have the knowledge of a landlord. You don't have the knowledge of the laws of the Commonwealth. The bylaws were written in the 60s. The vast majority of the bylaws were written in the 60s. The bylaws are not applicable to residents. The bylaws are applicable, applicable to the corporation of the board of commissioners. That's what they're applicable to. As far as the policies not being correct or in what, again, many of the policies have been rewritten. At the last meeting, you kept bringing up the 2006 policy, which was not being followed. It was the 2016 policy that was being followed. And if at any time the housing authority would end up in housing court with a bad policy, bad law, a judge which will certainly rule in the favor of the tenant. But when you keep passing on the 2016 policy, that all you did was re was copy the 2006 policy, which was already declared null. It was declared null and void by attorneys, and you're repeating it. So we're all going to talk right. for one, one by one now. Thank you, Pamela. Next would be Risa. All right. We don't want arguments. Right? We want your people to speak their ideas. Uh, in answer to uh, Commissioner Oppenheim's um, assertions, Rich and I sat on a subcommittee to review policy and uh, policy and to make recommendations to the board. I don't know if a previous board configuration prior to us, you know, the five of us being on the board had such a committee. But yes, Sue, you are completely accurate in part of your assertion. All the local policies need to be reviewed. Rich and, and we're doing that. Rich and I sat together, what, two weeks ago and went through every single local policy. I think we were at almost two hours and we're coming up with some changes we would like to see and propose to the board. But your, your assertion, and part of Harry's assertion that um, you know that that say the executive director or any executive director, because since you've been here, we've had six different executive directors, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I'm not saying it's, um, so. There is a need to constantly policies are living documents. They must be constantly reviewed for how how they should fit in our community, our housing authority. And so complaints about how it was done before, all an executive director, any executive director can do is follow the policies that a board of commissioners said are our policies. A, a an executive director does not write the policies. The board does. Okay. Excuse me. No, hang on. So everybody, I think, agrees that our policies need to be yes. reviewed and, and updated. Yes. So yes. whoever the management of the authority is, that's got to happen. Yes. You guys are already starting to work on that. You're well, not the management. It's the it's the board that's responsible. So what Harry is, right, you said you said, yeah. no matter who the administration is, yeah. the board has to work on the policies. And um, whether it's independent Hadley or Hadley working with Amherst, the policies have to be revised. So that's understood, I think. Yes, yeah, Pamela. Well, the board does that's the policy and you have the subcommittee working. But they should be working, they will be working a little bit with myself for as long as I'm here or any other executive director because the executive director is the one that has the knowledge of the lease and the laws of the Congress yes. in re relation to how it is. to the comment that we made about the uh, six executive directors that we've had here. 
Uh, Rich, I'm not remembering when you came on the board, but I believe Mary Billion was the executive, last executive director. Did we have issues back then that, that the board then decided that they should decide to join with Amherst? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was better run that way, more control and everything else, you know. Well, financially too, right? Financially also, yes. That was my understanding. That we go back, that the committee be disbanded between Reese and Richie, and that all of us will be on the committee because all board members are supposed to be working on on. Not, on policies and not just two people. And I've checked that back with, with many different yeah. organizations. So I think we that this meeting we should take a vote to disband this and work as a team as all the board members. And I also want to interject when you talk about policies being written by board members. Since I've been on the board and even a few months before that, we've gotten policies written by management and, and our board has signed off on it because they were too new to know any better. Okay. So not only are we dealing with okay, policy. We are working on a policy, but we are going to bring this to the board. No, we so we're going to all together, please. Okay, so uh, we are going to. We are going to. <laughs> we are going to work all together. Reese and I are going to look at the policy, decide any changes that we bring them to you, and you decide. Yeah, we what you want to do. Maybe you have some more suggestions or something. Um, do you, would you mind if other people from the board join the review? Yes. And the reason you is because of what Sue just said is a uh, to, to carry this motion forward and to vote on it is a violation of open meeting law. It is not an agenda item. So we can put that on the agenda for next meeting okay. about whether or not to disband the policy you committee. You have to post all your meetings then to review the it, it, Yes, and if more than two people on a board are on a subcommittee, it becomes subject to open meeting law, and everyone and their brother can can come and listen and et cetera, et cetera. It is why there are only two people appointed to a subcommittee to do the work of the board for the board. Yes, it is work that a board can do, okay. but to save time, resources we bring our recommendations to the board the board looks at the policy under review and says you know sue could say you know i want it to be this different way and one of us would say yeah that's a good idea let's vote on that so there's also, so there's also such things as a closed meeting besides executive session i'm not recommending it necessarily but um it is a lot of responsibility to start going through uh, these sure. policies mm -hmm. and revising them and then bring them back to the whole board mm -hmm. and discuss what you considered and why you rejected something and why you included something mm -hmm. for our consideration. Um, yeah, Sue. But because of the fact you told me that it's a, it's a conflict of interest to be able to talk about policies now, I feel it's also conflict of interest. I never said Don't that. Interrupt. Stop. I never said that. You can't say I said you something said that we I did not say. You just said we shouldn't be talking about this. You said it's an open meeting law, oh, open meeting law violation. Then. I'm sorry. But all right. All, so let's like all, let me finish my sentence, please. please. But also the fact that you went from, from commissioner to commissioner asking us if we had conflict of interest. Do you see that in our agenda? It was related to my disclosure of a conflict of interest given the laws from the Ethics Commission and the Code of Conduct that I described. And mine was related to the fact that Pamela mentioned policies. All right, so look, um, I'll take as much heat as you'd like to put on me. I do send out a message before I post an agenda to all of you, asking if you have any agenda items. Um, not everybody responds, so I'm gonna encourage you to respond to whoever is chair when an uh, inquiry goes out to ask if you have any agenda item. So if you would like a discussion of the policy review subcommittee there structure. Can't be a subcommittee is what I'm saying. We, I, we, there has to be all the board members. There I cannot be a subcommittee. Because we don't agree on that. So, so, so you exist. think we should have special meetings to go over each? Um, well, that's one of our duties as board members is to create policy and for the management to implement. That's one of the time the subcommittee to do the well, initial. I disagree with the subcommittee who you, okay. chose, who you chose. All right. Okay. If you'd like to put that on the next agenda and we could talk about it again. 
I will warn you that I am in favor of subcommittees. I'm in favor of sub subcommittees doing the work to review and then make suggestions for the whole board's opinion and review and vote. So it's a lot of work to review. Um, you know, what, what you're doing is should be a lot of, is a lot of work. And uh, Pamela told me recently you, you're trying to prioritize which are the most important to be first and, and all that. Okay. But policies run everything. And we have been remiss in updating our policies. So thank you doing for what you're doing. What I'm going to suggest is, and this will be pressure on you guys, is that you tell us over this next month before the next meeting, I'm not talking about this month, it's going to be a short month before the next meeting, but each month, which ones you're working on. And that way, if anybody else would like to review what other towns are doing or what the internet tells us should be included in a policy like that, you'll be ready for the discussion when they bring their recommendations forward. Okay, yes, Risa. I would just uh, now would like to ask our chair to place a policy review co a subcommittee on the agenda for our very next open meeting. What is the agenda item exactly? Uh, report from the policy review the subcommittee. Report. Yeah. Thank you. I, I have one available right now, but we okay. can and in the meantime, I'm not going to be here at the end of the month, remember, but uh, right. whenever you're comfortable, you can bring us the two or three policies you're looking at first. We, we looked at every one, but I will tell you, Richard, we I will. Break. Yeah, we can break it down. Yeah. Okay. Then any of us are free to either discuss um, or independently look at how other towns have done this or what DHCD might suggest. We think and, DHCD doesn't suggest. Educational groups like Mel King and Mass Union suggest, and they suggest good. that we don't have a subcommittee that, work, that we work together as a group. Well, okay. So should we, I'd be happy to, should we ignore what they tell us? I'd be happy to discuss with them if they'd like to send a representative. I'll explain why I think what we're doing makes sense, and they can argue. I don't see us getting together as a working group as often and as regularly as it would take to go through our options and uh, and come that up. If we are unhappy and dissatisfied with the work that Richie and Risa do, we will know that within the first couple of uh, reports that they come up with. But isn't and at that point, we can reassign. At that point, they'd be so fed up with the rest of us that they may say they don't want to do this anymore. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'd like to give them the chance to, to review one or two policies, come up with... Um, a new version and have us see if we're happy with what they do. But isn't the biggest question I'm asking the whole board, the fact that we're supposed to relook really at these policies every three to five years. We've gone through two executive directors that are still here, one director, one executive. Why hasn't this been done? Again, yeah, you know, okay. So you like to have, no, I'm talking about just so this let me, board. Let me be a little I hope I'm not being too but you seem to spend a lot of time looking at the past and reviewing the mistakes that have been made and highlighting them. And I'd like to work towards how we can do things better in the future. But you're not doing it correctly. If, if somebody tells you that you're not supposed to have a subcommittee, it's better to work as a group, then why would you automatically say, let's work with the subcommittee? Because in 28 years of public service, I've seen how powerful subcommittees can be, how but useful they can be. On the and getting five of us together to work cooperatively we see how much trouble we have just having a monthly meeting. Rich. Yeah. All right. Do I have a second? <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody against moving the agenda? All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. So let's get back to discussing uh, whether we we not we want to re renew with how Amherst and in what form. All right. So back to the executive directors that had we just had six of them. The comment that I'm sticking over the. Uh, Reasons or outcomes or why people didn't stay long. I don't know who the longest does this one have to do with renewing with Amherst. Yes, it does because okay. this goes along with whether we want to have our own executive director and advertise. So okay. I want to know if they were what the issues kind of were when okay. says executive director. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. The amount of time that the Department of Housing allows for a housing authority for fifteen hours, um, the amount of work it's been increasing over the years as regulations increase and reportings increase, um, tenant issues that there's a lot of tenant issues in Hadley, and that takes time to take care of the tenant issues versus the work of the housing authority, other work of the housing authority, um, pay, lack of benefits. 
что мы Why is it we've been unable as commissioners to see the paperwork that with the and the agenda, the minutes and the agenda where you where you went from a one year to a three year contract? We've had board members now that have asked to see this paperwork where you went from a one to a three. And we have yet to see it, no matter which of us have gone into the office to see this. So how can we know even how this transition went without when this is being hidden? Hello, Commissioner. Uh, we can address the other question, too. I'm Richie, because oh. he's talking about the one to the three. And I mentioned to the other Commissioner, Oppenheimer, you were presented with a Board of Commissioner binder that included all of the minutes where the discussion was held for the first contract, which was a one-year contract. One year later, the second contract was a three-year contract. You have all of the minutes and a copy of the contracts. They were also repeatedly provided to us in our board packets. We wouldn't come in. It, it's right in your binder. If you look in your binder, you have the same identical binder that I have, that Richie has, that David has, that Terry has. Then why would John Allen, myself, and Harry be asking over and over for these years if we have them? Did you didn't read your binder? The other binders are not there. They're, they are there. Mm -hmm. Um, look, we don't have to vote today, but we'd like to review those own minutes and, and seek out any reasons that no, were. I'm just saying, why should we have to answer this many months? John, well, and the answer was we've been given the material and it's in those binders. And I don't blame you if you haven't found it. Those binders are maybe overwhelming in their in their size, their girth, but um, the information is supposed to be. <laughs> And they were available in the office to be picked up. Okay. I had everything reprinted for the umpteenth time. Okay, so let's try to talk more about whether we want to stay with Amherst and if for itself, for how long, and if we want to advertise for uh, to see if there's new people out there. Um, does that fit into the equation? Why don't we just take it to that out? So the, I'm going to call this an informal straw vote or whatever they call it at election time just to get the opinions and see because it might take some discussion to get our final offer together to Amherst. As I'm going to repeat myself, forgive me, but speaking to the chairman earlier today, he felt pretty strongly that his commissioner wanted to see a three-year contract. Um, I didn't ask about advertising, but I understand from talking to other people in the housing world that there's nothing that prohibits us from advertising while we're in a management agreement. I could be proven wrong, but that's what I'm hearing. Um, so, Richie, we're talking about two things, renewing with Amherst, possibly, and for how long, and um, advertising for new uh, administrative firstly, staff. Firstly, I'd like to stay with Amherst for the, at least a minimum of three years. Three years, three minimum. Five-year contract. Okay. If you want to advertise, be my guest. Good luck with it. But. Okay, that's my attitude, too. I'll just mention out of turn here. That's sort of how I feel. Um, Lisa, how do you feel? I would prefer a five-year contract because the normal progression is a one-year. If things go well, a three-year. If things go well, a five-year. And the reason I would like a five-year contract is because we went from uh, below the required DHCD um, oh, what's the name of that? Uh, reserve. reserve. Uh, so DHCD requires the housing authorities to have a, uh, what is it, 35, 36% reserves. And we increased under the direction of Amherst Housing Authority, our reserves went up to 77% as of October 1st, last fall. Now, I can't think of any other small housing authority that is in such fabulous financial shape. And the overwhelming majority of tenants are quite happy uh, with the uh, response time for maintenance, the response time to concerns and questions. When I talk to folks as the tenant rep on the board, I talk to folks on the uh, that live here and at Burke Way 
they're very, very happy. We do have two exceptions of, of tenants who have never been happy, just as I can figure, and they are very vocal. Okay, so you're in favor of keeping on with Amherst for five years, and the main reason you have is that our reserve funds have grown, and you would expect them to grow or at least remain at a better level than they were before. And remember, that helps fund our capital improvement uh, projects. And we have capital improvement projects slated that the tenants really, really want to have happen okay. that likely will not be able to happen if we're self-managed. There won't be enough time to shepherd them through. Excuse me. That's one question as well. I know happy here. Mm -hmm. Talk to them about what happened last Friday where all the bushes and shrubs and plants and everything. Yeah. Everybody was happy with that? There are just like the wine program. There's only two uh, tenants who, are, who remain not in support of what the um, what the installers have required for a 10 foot on the outside and a three foot on the inside. There's only two tenants that haven't complied, okay. and everyone else has. Everyone else, with a combination of neighbors, so tenants helping tenants, uh, family, friends, helping each other, we are all ready to go. And the window project starts on Monday. Okay, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna add a nice finish. Yeah. When people have window replacement at their own homes, not in a complex or facility like this, they don't look about all your bushes and your shrubs. I'm not a chemist. They don't rip out all your bushes and your shrubs and uh, plants that have been there that have flowered. They cover them up, they, they take care of them, they do the windows, and, and they contract with that, and then off you go. So to hear the tenants were happy or they're happy in what Really, the latest transformed here with all these bushes and stuff. I don't know whether they really are happy or not, or they're just afraid to speak up because they know that they'll get some retribution to that. Are you thinking? I was in my hand raised before you. Yes, I did. But I have responded to his. You've already talked. Can you give somebody else a chance? Yeah. So, Go ahead. Let me, let me, let me Look, Henry, I understand that as a retired state auditor, you don't have much experience with with hazardous waste. I, however, do. And uh, I was a health officer for years. We have hazardous waste in the form of asbestos in the ceiling around our windows, put in years and years ago before it was recognized as a hazard. Under Massachusetts state law, which the contractor has to comply with, there has to be a 10 foot distance. There has to be lots of stuff put into place, covering things with plastic. There has to be room for the workers to work safely. And that's why impediments to safe work, like bushes and trees, which weren't ever supposed to be planted, in these gardens anyway, have to be removed to protect the workers, to allow the removal of the hazardous waste and the removal and installation of the windows. Okay. So it's not the Amherst Housing Authority requiring that this be done. This is required by the installation crew, okay? Mm -hmm. Why I don't appreciate you often making assumptions that there's only two people who are unhappy at Golden Court. I watch people, when that notice that was threatening came into our homes, I saw 80 and 90-year-old, 70-year-old people scrambling to, pull, to pick up the things and throw good things that they utilize into the dumpster. People trying to rip their own gardens out in the hottest summer that we've had on history with, with mosquitoes and humidity off the chart. That, then it started to calm down this last by, by Friday. Most of the people complied, fear factor. So by you saying that it's only a few people that aren't happy, you don't talk to everybody that's here, and they're going to tell you what you want to hear. But by you saying there's only two people that are unhappy, you're just parroting the powers that be 
And that shows, once again, are you, see if you're not paying attention to me when I'm talking. You're supposed to be addressing me, Sarah. I know, but I was talking to you. You're supposed to be addressing me, Sarah. Mm -hmm. We hear you. She, she didn't address it here when she What's your comment right now on, on the uh, con My con yeah. The last thing I want to do is to renew a contract with Amherst Housing. Okay. I have a list a mile long. I'm willing to share it with people. So you know, would be for just stopping now. Stopping, now, stopping now or stopping okay. it you know, within a certain number of days, but definitely not sign another contract. All right. So our contract currently expires October 1st or September 30th. So that's uh, eight weeks, six, six, six weeks from now, approximately. So you want to end the contract at the end of the existing contract, September 30th, and to be and to what? Who, Who would manage a housing authority? As that Pamela point? said at other meetings, she'd be willing to stay until we found somebody. Would you be willing to stay unless you promise? I hope so. Let me uh, let me address. What's that now? There's going to be a vote. Whether it's for a year, two years, three years, when we stop. How long would you guess the transition stage would be under which you and Amherst would be willing to work with Hadley uh, with the growing pains of taking over? again by ourselves. In other words, what would be in your mind a reasonable transition stage where you and your staff um, and the commissioners and Amherst would agree would agree to give Hadley as we adjust to the new management agreement? A couple of months, a year? I mean, what, what do you think would be reasonable? Not a year. Um, uh, I mentioned six months to the board in Amherst. Um, they weren't as keen as that. But I, again, I've made uh, mention of the shortage of staff across the Commonwealth in housing. So it's going to take a bit. Yeah. I would strongly recommend and um, potentially even if we continue that you hire an outside firm for the search. Um, Massonaro provides their service where they'll, they'll work with the board to get the, the job description that's correct. There's all kinds of regulations um, through the HCD that have to be made, the qualifications of the person, how much you advertise, the newspapers, the outreach. Um, there's also another private company, Dean's East Main Sale, something like that in Connecticut, that can help. I can get you that information. Um, but that if you're going to go out to hire, that you're going to use somebody else. Um, it can't be the board commissioners running it on their own. Um, it most certainly cannot have any interference from the town government at all um, with it. Is absolutely going to cost some money. I can't honestly tell you. The last time that um, I was aware of approach was when Amherst hired me, and that's now five years. I can look up the records. I'm sure Carrie has them. Um, but I can also get quotes for you, too. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, I would be I'm willing to help get you the public housing notices, get you the name of some contractors. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that we get an attorney to. Oh. I thought you were done. Oh, okay. He, he went. Oh. All right. So if we do, I'll just comment. Are we that. talking? Are we finishing this now before we can make other motions? I'm finishing it just by repeating what Pamela said in a louder voice. Um, that there are resources out there to do the search for new uh, administrative staff and that they cost money, but they're professional and that they can cover all the bases. That's what I'm hearing and that sounds good to me regarding a search, uh, doing a search. Sue, okay. should we have our own attorney? I think we should have our own attorney. I should make a motion that we have an attorney to guide us through this since we're, we can't be guided by the powers that be necessarily we and we can't necessarily go to dhcd to instruct us i really think that we need an outside attorney and like to make a motion for that we have a second now mr Please. chair All right, anybody like to second <laughs> for discussion oh, for this. so we're going to stay on the attorney discussion for a minute here pamela you have a comment so you can certainly have to follow 
what the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities follow. They, they're your subsidy. They're the one that provide the money. They are the ones that regulate housing authorities and oversee housing authorities. We must follow their, their laws and not go out on so how do we have to have the housing authorities with them? So the public housing notice and then you as the chairperson would also be have a direct connection with a person at the Department of Housing. And then you and the um the, the contractor that you would hire or the company that you would hire to help you would um, work together. In conjunction. Okay, and then you. it does come back to the board. Once you get a couple of, of um, candidates, the board most certainly interviews the candidates and reviews their background. So I don't, have good luck. I don't have good luck getting a response from the Department of Housing and Livable mm -hmm. Communities. Uh, the Department of Community Development, but whatever that's, DHT and well, DCL. Uh, can you help them? Get connected to his liaison. Yeah, and they would prioritize. Yeah, and they would prioritize. They would prioritize you over. I mean, again, lots of tenant complaints come in every single day. They have to prioritize those, and those are not they're really under their bailiwick eye. Okay. So um, but if she knows that you're in the middle of an executive director search, your inquiry would be. Yeah, absolutely. I have a, a question too. Um, so it looks like in the straw vote, a couple of commissioners are are one. We're still on the attorney uh, motion. Do you want to talk about that or something else? What? Well, you didn't even finish the straw vote. Is anybody not voting? Okay. Yeah, we okay. have. You what, three to two. Okay. Sorry. So it's very really detailed on the straddle. Yeah, so to finish what I was saying, um, but you know, would you please instruct um, Commissioner Oppenheim that I have the floor by your own direction? Clear yourself instructed, too. Yes, no. Um, so my question about the use of an attorney uh, for this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my question is, Mr. Chair, what would be the purpose of hiring an attorney for a process that that the executive office has already set forth and that, uh, say we have an outside contractor, the one through Mass Narrow, the one in Connecticut, and whoever else is doing it, uh, already has this as a, as a program that they offer housing authority. Why not let them find the attorney? No, no, running. why not let them run this whole search? Because I don't see anyone on this board that's got the capacity or the time or the knowledge to do it. Um, so if we did hire a consultant company that we just heard about, mm -hmm. um, why would we need to also pay an attorney and why would we be Hiring an attorney. That may be part of their service. They it, may, they may have a that. Yeah. So we, we can explore that. Right? Just because of the fact that you... That you Are you speaking to the chair, ma'am? Oh, I'm looking at both of you. Yeah. Two eyes. Anyway, just because of the fact that you made a comment that you cannot reach DHCD. What have I didn't say it. Well, you said you had a difficult time yeah, reaching yeah. And what have tenants been saying all these years? Unresponsive. But then you leaned over, then she leaned over, the commissioner, Lisa, leaned over and said to Pamela, but don't, well, can't you uh, get this going? I mean, in other words, you have to go to the executive director in order to be able to have DHC respond to a board member. That's one of the reasons we're telling you is tenants. DHCD has been unresponsive. We shouldn't have to go to somebody who runs a housing authority to get responded to. And that's basically what you said. Or can't you get anybody to be responsible? Somebody you can go to Boston, Sue, and let DHCD know what you think they of their know, response. They know what yeah. he tends to think about them. Right. They can change Hopefully, them. Mass Narrow, um, Mass Union, and whoever else is out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, well, I don't want to badmouth anybody today. And the other outcome is, is to call the government talk. If they have that big of a complaint with the executive office, I don't think they should call the governor. Right. Okay, I appreciate that. So, um, 
we so take a vote today? Otherwise, this is just going to keep hanging on and hanging on and making it. So it's about time that we vote today on renewing the contract with. We need a proposal of what to vote on. So I can make a motion to go ahead and renew for three years, understanding that we can get out of that within 60 days notice as the existing contract says. And I will also go as far to say that if anybody on the board wants, or two people, three people on the board would like to test the waters and advertise to see what staff is out there, that they use the appropriate channels to do that and I don't try to do it by themselves. Does that work? So I think it would be all, I need to be the vote. Okay, two votes, yeah, all right. Understanding that we stay out and come back you're going to utilize the services of a consultant to advertise for um, an independent um, and maybe that's part of the discussion too, because you can go out and you can advertise for an independent executive director or another management agreement. You could do that goes in the same ad, so it's up to the board. Um, I would include it all in one motion, and then it's the, the board as a whole is working on finding a new. Yeah, if it goes out. Does that have to be approved by the DHCB? Yes. Okay, so if we had some sample from them of what it would be, just make it having specific, yeah. why would we need a consultant? We would just want it, and we would just want the DHC living communities, whatever, to uh, think that that's the ad that we could put in. Why would we need a consultant? So the consultant would advertising to you and then Terry do you remember wasn't it like 16 newspapers and outlets or there's a list of papers that you have newspapers that you have to um advertise in making to make sure right to, and under the regulations so that you're hitting minority groups um poverty areas looking for folks within those areas and demographics um, and then there's lots of reporting afterwards. And then the consultant also would um, pre-screen the applicants that they send to you to make sure that they meet the qualifications because there's under the hiring of a, a new executive director, there's a list of qualifications that you must have for the executive office to then approve the hiring of your executive director. Because that's so the same thing with you know the hiccup that we have with the management agreement where it meets it's not valid until DHCD signs it. It's not valid your signature or your hiring of an executive director until DHCD approves it. You have to go through and, and prove that you've done all these things. Okay, so that's the person's problem. You can fight me if you wish, but I think we should have two motions. One to renew with Amherst for a certain length of time um, with that 60 day out and the other to begin a search for either someone to do the search for new management or um, to work with the ACD as independently as we can. We've always done it as a board. I mean, they've always done it as a board jointly together. We, I mean, to what? go on the search for an exec executive director, not not just make one or two people in charge like you want to no, do. It would be the whole board. Right with the search, definitely. But it sounds like you have some options how to run the search, and I'm not depending on the cost. I guess I'm not opposed. I like the idea of a uh, professional group doing the search with us, and yes, it would be with all of us. So I'm going to make a motion right now to renew for with Amherst for three years um, with that 60-day out clause. Are you voting now? Oh, yeah, I'd like to make the motion to have the okay. vote. Okay. okay, now, um, discussion. Discussion is, like, I'm going to get back to my original. Please. I, I'm asking you, David Moskin, Chairman, to recuse yourself yes. regarding this management agreement between Hadley and Amherst Housing. And I'd like to hear a second on that. Do you have any reason why you'd like me to recuse? No. Maybe there's a good reason. I'm just not aware of it. I'm not going to give the reason now, please. <laughs> I need help here. Can you be asked to recuse without being a reason given? 
Is it my breath? No. I've been working on that. <laughs> we're, we're on the discuss. Uh, no, we're on a boat now. I see. You're in the motion that I accuse myself. Yes. We have a special light. Like, um, we're having, he's, no, he opened it for. You made a motion, Mr. Chairman, to enter into the contract. Right. That was second. <laughs> now we're in discussion. Right. So now she's coming out with something else. Because we were already in discussion. We're in discussion a second time. I thought we were in actual vote. How many times we've already discussed it previously to now? Why will we be opening it up? The point I'm making is we're discussing why he should recuse himself. Not but that's, that's nothing I found out from it, that I have to tell him why I would like him to recuse. I just feel yeah, that you good. should recuse yourself from the middle. I think that would be a good time to give him feeling that I should recuse myself. Yeah, no, no, please. Okay, so well, just for somebody to second the recusal. No, we're going to have a discussion on that. Then he's going to disclose why she doesn't. No, I'm not going to disclose. I'm just going to keep recording. Yeah. 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 Two motions that have been made and seconded, but you do have to, you have to wait on that because you're not going to the vote yet for that yeah. motion. Then there was the discussion on, it was first and seconded for a discussion on going on a three year. Uh, and discussion. You did all the things because you had the first and second, and then discussion, and so if there's no more discussion on that. If nobody else has any discussion on that, then if she's saying she wants to recuse you, that's where you're going. Then. Yes. Yeah. I would like a second on the recusing. I'll, I'll second that for the discussion. Of, okay. Not can, can I do that? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, right. I'm not saying why you want to do business. No, I'm, I'm, this is something that I will tell you at another time. I'm just asking for a recusal. Um, okay. And if all those in favor of Mr. Mouse can himself from the vote on the contract renewal, say yes. yes. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yes. You can, you can, you can yes. have a person can recuse himself without having a reason why. Because there might be many reasons, and I'm not about to do it now. I understand, but the point is if we're going to have a himself, okay? And, but we don't know what, what are we voting on? Why he can't, why he should recuse himself? I what are we voting on? I'm not excusing myself. Right. Oh, what reason? Have a reason that she's willing to then how can we, then how can we vote to recuse <laughs> to recuse me? I'd like to hear a reason too. I'm not gonna recuse myself well, I don't why she'd like me to recuse. I feel like I'm being forced to say no, you know no, it's just no, because you made a motion and I seconded it. I, I so, feel I feel like you're conflicted. I feel like my you know, that any time we've been together that you that you're very conflicted about where to be. I think you're being pulled by in, in many directions. I think uh, that I, I feel sometimes that you meet with management, even though you're chairman, too too often, and uh, you know, and, and not a reasonable amount of time. Where I I feel like you spend with tenants compared to the amount of time you spend with management. I mean, tenants of your yeah. fellow board member tenants, and I, I have a lot of reasons why. I just feel that at this moment that you should recuse yourself because okay. of the fact of what I've been observing over the last. You mean all right, thank you. I mean, I'll respond if people don't mind. But, uh, I think I've met with Pamela personally. Well, we met when I, I was first appointed by the governor, and uh, you refused an offer of a strawberry milkshake, as I remember. And then, <laughs> and uh, I think we've sat in your office twice now, three times, twice, twice now. Um, so if you're uncomfortable with that, I'm not going to apologize for it. I don't feel like I don't feel like okay. I don't feel like I've met with the director enough. So what else? Oh, anyway. So I I don't know what else to respond to. The, yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, please. Uh, completely appropriate and desirable for the chair of a board of commissioners of housing to have a collegial relationship with the executive director over who the board provides oversight. It's, it's part of the working relationship, like contacting the executive director regarding scheduling the meeting, minutes, 
the agenda, getting things posted, like what right. asking okay. her what's going Thank on. You. That's a completely appropriate. Yeah. The other comment you made was that I'm conflicted. And you bet I didn't know what the clear I still I'm not sure what the clear answer if there is a clear yeah. answer here. I, so feel, I, I feel like I feel like by speaking with you and being with you on the board at different times, I feel like a real conflict of I feel like it's really difficult for you to make a decision about this particular matter. Well, that's what I did to that, it to. Right. And I did think about it for weeks. All right. And my decision is a three year contract with the sixty day out. And whoever wants to go out and work on Finding new management is welcome to do that. I may participate no, no, in some. No, I'd like to know. We, have, we can only act as a board of commissioners with a quorum vote. So no That's senior fine. board of I'm commissioners. I'm just explaining to, okay. to Sue okay. why she got the impression that was. But if, I'm recu if I have a second in recusing, then don't I? Sure, you can now call, I can now call for a vote. Right. All those who would like me to recuse from the vote to renew with Amherst, say aye. Aye. Put your hand down, David. <laughs> so uh, one vote that I recuse. And uh, the so I don't know if I've got a good enough explanation, Sue. I want to work with you as a human being, not just as a chair of a commission here. No, this is the note part. You're on my recusal, but you can make another motion if you'd like to recuse me or um, talk about my conflicted nature. We've already voted on the recusal. Yeah. So it's a no. Four to one. You can make another motion if you'd like to somehow eliminate me from the discussion or the vote, but uh, right now I'm ready to move to a vote if people want to vote today on reopening yes. with Amherst. If there's reason not to vote today, I would vote. I would welcome to um, vote not to vote today. What's that? To have a vote today. Yeah. 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 Two motions, one to stay with Amherst or not, and then one on um, the search. Well, the, the the stay with Amherst is for to re-up a three-year contract. That's the motion on the table. It yeah. has been seconded. Now we're in discussion. Yes. I'm, I'm including the 60-year out in my motion to renew the three-year contract. 60-day out. 60-day. 60. So a three-year contract with the 60-day out from either side. That is both. Uh, integral to my motion. Did I get a second on the motion? It's, I mean, it's already, we've already second. had that motion. Second. It's okay. already been moved. So moved. So and now just, we can vote if, if everyone has had an opportunity for discussion. I want to continue the discussion. I don't think the length of time on the contract is the issue here. I think it's the uh, advertising for the executive director's job. And speaking what's out there and who comes forward and whatever. And you're right. I am not an authority on housing funds. I'm nothing about this whole operation a year and a half ago. But, um, and I don't know who's out there. Okay, we have 16 hours that we're supposed to be having this office. And I've seen the new hours. We have somebody here on Monday and somebody here on Friday. And this is under your administration. Why can't we? Why can't we get somebody here to, to, for four hours a day, four days a week? Whatever. That's sixteen hours. Oh, my dad's here full time. So where are we? I'm not. I know she puts her hand up all the time. But so who is now in this office? So they they're in this office Monday. They're in the sub Monday and Friday, and that was it. That's 16 hours all day. Monday. All day. Well, then the staff is also we have a full use of the staff from here, which can be made through Friday and any time. But back to the trend, back to the uh, transition with that with the happened with the 60 day notice. Um, I'm not in favor of a three year contract. Uh, I don't want to be locked in for three years, even though we have a 60-day you know, notice. 
I still stand by an extension of the current contract for 90 days or 120 days, whatever, while we go through our process to find out what we're taking. Right. Okay. You recall? Well, you haven't called the vote yet. I'm in discussion. I'm telling you what I'm saying. It's supportive. Okay. So the, the 16 or 17 hours a week from uh, set forth by the Executive Office on Housing and Livable Communities is based on a per unit. That 17 hours of Executive Director time, Mr. Chair, uh, not only includes window time, when, when the tenants can go to the window and actually talk to a human being, it also includes back office time. It's roughly about half and half. Is that correct? I mean, Amherst supplies uh, 16 hours or so of window time where a tenant can see a human, you know, a staff person. But there's also back office time. You cannot be uh, you uh, doing sensitive things, you know, all the time. Yeah. The executive director is really only responsible for four hours. The director of public housing is seven. Yeah. Staff account, asset manager, that's as of 16. 16. Right. right. Then we have the other hours for maintenance, mm -hmm. another 15 of all the maintenance yeah. hours. So 15 maintenance hours, 16 yeah. for what typically, if you were self-managed, Mr. Chair, you would only get, or the executive director would only get paid for 16 hours and would have to do all these jobs of which roughly half of them require them not to be in the office with working on stuff that, you know, has to be done just, just for even being able to add together and do research and, and data entry on applications, you need peace and quiet. So, so even when we did have our own executive director, uh, that she might have been in the office, but the window had to be closed so she could concentrate on finances. Because when you have just your self managed with an executive director, you're responsible for all the accounting too. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so that's the new staff. So that was, and it is, and it is written to staff the window that way. So that's to show that I'm going to be on staff with the people. The original agreement that we had, the administrative administrative staff was here over 40 hours a week with the different because there was so much work going on, and there's still so much work going on. But this is this is what we're required to provide. So that's, it's just like they said, you know, we're all on salary and we are a contracted administrator and administration is 37 and a half hours. We work well above the 37 and a half hours. So it's, um, so on paper, it says my contract says 37 and a half hours. But if you look at my time card that I'm required to be, it's 50, 60 hours, depending on the way. Is this a realistic work assessment? No. So this is comes from DHCD then. I did it that we needed that. It, and I'm not saying we're not going to give you more. Why is the DHC going to give us just be minimal? It's requiring more more time. Is it in the end up to us or is there some rule about how many hours people can work? Um, part time, very part time administrative person that was um, um, five or six hours was the administrative person that was a backup to Mary Billion. Um, your ED contract, you, can, you actually can require more out, go out to bid or out to add for a new executive director. You can say, I want you to work full time. But you cannot pay them one penny more than what the DED uh, salary um, allows, and then and you wouldn't be able to give them benefits. That's your question. Okay. Amherst Housing took on adding mm -hmm. and more units under your responsibility. You get an increase in your salary. Mm -hmm. Based on taking on Abby's units. That's correct. And in that 
last thing I saw from Gary that pays is $35,000 for the management fee, the management fee. So who pays the additional compensation for you having responsibility for half the units because your salary definitely went up? Yeah, so first of all, that $35,000 goes to the number of that 10% is allowed to go to up to 10% is allowed to come to the executive director. But it all comes through Amherst. It does not come through the executive You take that and divide that by a 52 week period of time. And I don't have the numbers of the calculator in front of me. Uh, comes out to so much a week, and yeah. then you divide that by 16 hours. Mm -hmm. That's a nice hour rate right, for somebody who did. If we advertise, we want to be an executive director here. It's so like a 30 something, 30 something dollars an hour. When I worked in Belchertown, I was contracted to work 22 hours. I worked full time in Belchertown. The jobs are not realistic. And exactly. How much time from what we spend? About ten percent of what average gets, right? Thank you. I thought twenty percent. I thought it's yeah. Okay. So now we get to the bonus guys. You look at some more. No employee of Amherst has been paid by having. You don't have pay. If you're provided that information every month, it'll go on. And that's been talked, and that's why we don't get, but that's why we don't get policies done because we keep repeating it over and over again. Excuse me, you've been given the warrant report, you've been given the budget every single month. There is no line item for payroll, not one line. Item. No, the I want to make sure that when, um, when you hear that Amherst is getting $46,000 in the management fee in a new contract or something, 20% of that goes to the executive director, which is uh, $9,300 or something like that. So it's not a huge amount of money to be responsible for overseeing uh, 52, uh, units. 52 units here in Hadley. Pamela in her pocket is getting another that I'm aware of, 90 $9,300. Um, I'm surprised she wants to do it, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, when you go out to hire, it's the $37,000 that you can hire. This might change when they when DHCD um, does the next budget guidelines. It'll, it could go up, mm -hmm. but it could stay the same. There's been numbers of years that the ED salary did not go up. Regular staff could have a salary increase, but they keep it. But so right now, this is the latest. This is what you've already used. Exactly. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. 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 I'm hearing you said earlier that it's very hard to find people right now throughout Massachusetts or the whole country. But I, like I just said, I'm in favor of re-upping with Amherst. I'm also in favor of doing the search, whoever wants to spend time on that. Um, are you confident that they'll find somebody if they do a search? Or are people really going without EDs right now? And whatever? Because it's you can't you know you don't know if it's like Chicopee Housing Authority. Chicopee Housing Authority has been searching for an executive director now going on two years. That's a huge housing authority, and they have a federal and state programs. So are they not finding somebody because it's a different level of an executive director? Um, but then you have the Warren Housing Authority and Warehousing Authority um, that are having trouble, and and these are just ones in Western Mass that I'm referring to. And they're very small housing authorities, although where is a full-time agency? They have federal Section 8 too, so they most certainly pay a higher amount because they have Section 8 vouchers. Um, Do we have no, Amherst has them, but but have them. 
So their executive director has been hoping to retire for, uh, and she's hanging on. And it, and it's good that they have an executive director that's committed to the agency, but she'd like to get out of where the, the executive director retired. She just said, I'm done and, and when. So they have assistants helping at that point. But um, but so there is, I, I, I couldn't, um, I know we have a hard time hiring, um, but it's, you're not going to know unless you put it out there. You really are not going to know unless you have yeah. it. But we're not allowed to get involved with operations or so says DHCD. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we can't talk to the director about changes we'd like to see. You know, it doesn't mean we can't ask the director before she does major operational things that she talks about them with us. And she may not have to listen to us regarding making changes to what she wants to do, but it doesn't mean we can't have a voice in her thinking and her administration here. So um, I think there's a power here that we haven't exercised yet or taken advantage yet, maybe because we're so we're not very cohesive as a working board. So if we do continue on with Amherst, we can perhaps have a bigger role with things like um, landscaping. And I sat with uh, Pamela briefly the other day and she had the idea. So I came in asking, could we have a little slush fund here? So anybody that's lost uh, plantings or had plantings cut down could apply for um, funding to replace those uh, destroyed or lost plantings. And Pamela's reaction to that, as I remember, was yes, we could do that, but also maybe we should approach it in a more holistic uh, way, which is get a landscaper to come in here, look at what we have, and make recommendations to beautify, replace, and increase it. We have the Conway School of Landscape Design, Massachusetts University of Mass has a landscape design program that I've had some experience with. So maybe it's up to us to have a little bit of more of a role here. Yeah. But you're not, David, you're not looking at the emotional aspect. It's not as though our gardens were ripped up by by shovels. They were mowed down by chainsaws and weed whackers. Like a it was like a clear cut. Yeah. This is not just somebody coming in and daintily removing our stuff. I don't There's an emotion. Like you can replace here. things for people, but you can't take the pain and the scars away okay. from people that have had this happen to them over and over, especially when our trees were cut. The one place that we sat under year after year were cut down. And this is just another attack on tenants. Right. So maybe not, uh, if we brought in some professional help or not, no, well, the we, professional can, can't we, can help us. we can replace that tree, we can no, replace the lost plantings. Things can can't be replaced. It's not like replacing a dress or a tie. Thank you, sir. So I had a conversation with Commissioner Oppenheimer and reminded her of the ethics violation of sitting on the board and talking as a tenant about her situation. You most certainly are. And she needs she needs when she's sitting on the board, she needs to act as a commissioner of the housing authority, not as a resident of the housing authority. You're, you weren't. So, just as a reminder, what we really should focus on is how to make things better in the future, not, no, the, not, not the mistakes of the past. That's the problem. If you want to focus, that's one of the reasons I want to accuse you because you are not looking at how tenants are being abused and assaulted okay, here. That's why I want you. That's one of the reasons. That's why you're focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. thank you, Richie. Yeah. All right, so I've made a motion. Yeah, I'll repeat so the motion. Um, so the motion is three years with the, with the 60 um, day out for either side. And then I'd like to handle the search motion as a separate motion. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I'm more comfortable with doing that way. So all those in favor of three more years with Amherst with the 60 day out, Raise their hand. No. Sue Oppenheimer. No. Dave Moskin, yes. Risa Smith Freed, yes. Rich Whitgush, yes. Okay. Now I'd like to make a second motion that we go out and do a search as they had the housing authority. 
um, for a new administrator or a new administration. And part of that search, explore consulting opportunities, which may be available through a private firm in Connecticut and through Mass Narrow, which is public private, right? It's, it's, private. it's private. All right. Anyway, through um, with a consultant's help. So the motion is we start a search for a new administration. So it has to be independent and then we use professional professional consultants to help conduct the search. Any other discussion on how to do the search, Pamela? Well, or could it be an ED with um, or a management agent? I think that question would be best answered by the professionals who could tell us what we need here in Hadley. Well, you need an ED and you need an accountant, or you need an ED and you need a property manager, or you need an ED, a property manager, and an accountant. So I, I'm not going to choose who the position should be myself or make that motion, but I look forward to advice on what we need here in Hadley to be independent. So we're in discussion. My question is, can we use, as long as it's approved by the PHCL living conditions, whatever, I still like the DHCD, it was easy, I was used to that. Um, can we use any other personnel agencies as long as they cooperate with the DHCD state agency with respect to what we want? Um, right, like water half or another group. Yeah. 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 Who we all think are better than the existing administration, I might be willing to vote on ending with Amherst. But because we don't, and because I've heard that Amherst doesn't want to just extend the existing contract, they want a commitment for the three years with the 60 day out. Um, that's why I want to stay with Amherst. We don't have another team ready to go. And it's also why, if people on this board really want to look for who else is out there, I'm not going to stand in their way. It's a free country as far as I'm concerned. So I will. So we have a motion to allow the search, right? With professional help. That's the motion. And you wouldn't like to try doing it yourself before you see professional I'm hearing and I'm going to believe, Pamela, that we're not just allowed to do our best as individual commissioners. We haven't even tried it yet. What makes us no, 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 it's a matter of. We've done it before. Yeah. Yeah. That's not. We have to approve our fines. So. Mr. Chair, it's only in the end. Uh, a search for an executive director, ultimately, even if you use Robert Half or something, has to go through and be approved by DHC. That's not her. Yes. So uh, the other thing is there are very stringent requirements for an ED search, an executive director search, for which it's quite possible that. Board of Commissioners acting outside of a quorum vote of the board and the entire board, even if acting within a quorum vote, could be held liable for discrimination against right. protected classes. So you're in favor of getting professional help to do the search? I'm in favor of always using professionals who take on that liability Thank you. just to protect us as board of commissioners. Okay, well said. Um, so the vote and the second, the motion and the second is to, I guess, to have a vote to go allow a search with professional help for a new administration. I don't know if I'm saying this really well, but anyway, is it clear? So we've voted to stick with Amherst for three years with the 60 day out. Now we're voting to allow a search with professional help. That's the motion. That's the vote. All those in favor? Aye. No. No. No search. No search. No search. Okay. Uh, that was the business of the day. Uh, can you do it in first, you guys? Yes, that's what I'm just about to say. I'm going to encourage you guys to meet again at the end of the month. So to review the, to review minutes from two meetings, excuse me, guys.
wish I had a hammer. If I had a hammer, <laughs> I got my mom's old hat. Oh, Mr. Chair, yeah. I propose that we delay the next meeting until you return on the first week of September. That's a motion? Yes, I move that we. Oh, he wants me to repeat. Would you he have... wants to meet when I'm back. And I thought you guys could go ahead and meet at the end of the month so we have a regularly scheduled and video. No. 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 September. I, I, September. September. Right, let's choose a day. September. The 29th, I think. The very next night, the night of our meeting, as I remember. So, uh, if you Who's going to take sorry. Tuesday, September 5th. I have my schedule's clear. All right. Richie, that okay? Tuesday, September 5th. Yeah. So I move that we our next meeting be held on September 5th at 11 a.m. That is a Tuesday. Okay. Any other discussion? Can we have some feedback on our business? All of our business at the end of the month, why don't we have to All right. Um, Pam, I'm going to ask you to give me a clean contract for Michael if you do that. Thank you. And I also would like to bring up the motion about getting an attorney, which I brought up before, and it wasn't discussed. Uh, I'll let you know that the next meeting I'm with you on that. I think it'd be a good idea. But I thought we already voted that we would not be looking for a new meeting. No. You actually voted no, for just in general. Yeah. 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 I make a second. Second. Anybody opposed? We are adjourned.